Accelerate Church television program. We are so glad that you could tune in with us today. Pastor Jeremy is teaching on building a strong foundation, such an imperative message for us as Christians as we build our life on the Word of God. We're heading into the sanctuary now with Pastor Jeremy File. Anything you do in life, you can trace it back to your foundation. In other words, if your life is built up high and you go high and become big in life, if you don't have that strong foundation, there's coming a fall. I guarantee you. And so to build a strong foundation, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of uh, tenacity on your part, uh, a lot of money to build a strong foundation. And so I was thinking about this, and before we turn to the scriptures tonight, which are, are holy and, and revelation is going to flow, I'm, I'm believing that in Jesus' name. You believe it too. As long as you have ears to hear and you pull tonight, I believe you'll receive from God. I was looking uh, at several different companies' websites that are foundation repair companies. And there's quite a few of them in the area, and there's quite a few of them across the nation because this is a pretty common theme to have a weak foundation or a problem with your foundation when it comes to a natural home. So I looked at several websites, and I was just curious about what are common signs of, of a foundation that's weak or failing. And, and there's these common ones, five of them I want to read to you. And I want you to see there's a spiritual parallel to each one. As I read them, I was like, whoa, I've got to share this. The first one is this, cracks in the walls or the floor. Right? You see a big crack, you say, well, okay, there's a foundation problem. So you call one of the foundation repair companies. They come out, they assess the situation and tell you. And I got to thinking about this. What causes this in a person's life many times is unforgiveness, giving themselves over to strive for gossip, which is very common. You know you're in a church, right? And when you come to a church, it's easy to do it. And I get so tickled sometimes because, you know, now with Facebook, it's a dirty sham how people are because they, they will ignore the one-on-one -on -one meeting they had with pastors behind closed doors. They'll go public and shame others for gossiping. And the very meeting I had with them was about gossip. And I think, you know, if I had half a brain, I would just shut my mouth probably. But that's not how Christians operate. They like to let the world see it out there. And they just love to post it and, they, and talk. And they don't even realize what they're doing is exposing that huge crack. Like it's like they're saying, well, I tell you one thing, I never thought I would see this in church. Well, you're, you're part of the problem. You're part of the crack here, right? And when there's strife and unforgiveness, it eventually leads to bitterness. Now, now let me tell you this. If you build on that, it's not a smart way to build your life. Come on, somebody. It's not a smart way to build your life. You don't want to build on a crack. Write it down. <laughs> Somebody said, that's not deep. It's pretty deep. You don't want to build on a crack. If, it, if your foundation opens up and cracks, before you ever start building, you'd have a problem. You'd say, wait a minute. There's a huge crack right through there. Looks like Paladero Canyon. Don't build on that. We got that, right? And everybody at church on Wednesday night is going to say, yeah, we got that, Pastor. Yet, <laughs> what happens when you leave here? You know what people say? Real life happens. When real life happens, you don't understand. Okay, I got you. The number two, I better move on before I really chase a rabbit there. The number two sign of a failing or a weak foundation is this. Uh, this one is interesting. Foundation upheaval. I was like, what? Several websites said this. Foundation upheaval, which can happen when, get this, the soil pushes the foundation upward because of pressure. It could be a water leak. It could be water outside of it. Lots of times this happens on the outside towards the outer edges, but sometimes it happens in hallways. This is several websites say this. This is what to look for, foundational upheaval. I got to thinking about this. I was like, wow, when the world influences us too much, it will cause your foundation to have this upheaval where you have something just out of balance all of a sudden. And a lot of times, see, this only happens in one area. So, uh, you know, there's very common ones I call out here, but there's a whole lot, a lot of other ones in life happening. But, but alcohol is an example. See, if you don't allow the Word of God to be your foundation structure for the way you view alcohol, you'll think it's okay to be a sipping Christian because you'll look around at so many people's foundations that have been upheaved in that area. 
It's out of balance there, right? Okay, better move on. I can tell that didn't go over real big. How about this one? Number three, doors that stick. I said, oh, wow, this is interesting. They don't open and close properly. This is a big deal. The enemy's looking for a sticky door in your life. You ever heard the song, shut the door, keep out the devil? Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Come on, somebody. How are you going to shut the door if the door don't shut? Because you got a foundation problem. Uh-oh, I'm on to something. Better move on. Number four, got a lot of ground to cover. Gaps around window frames or exterior doors. I'm not telling you to call a foundation repair person. I'm, I'm, I'm just showing you, isn't this interesting, the parallels, when people in the natural will look at their house and say, well, there's cracks, I better call them. Right? Or they'll see upheaval. Well, I better call a foundation repair person. What about when you see a gap around a window frame or an exterior door? What about then? Well, why is that a big deal? Well, it allows outside air in. It makes the house where it's not efficient. Mm. 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 Yeah. So if you've got gaps around your spiritual windows and doors... When the wind of false doctrine blows through, you'll be standing inside and your hair will be blowing back. <laughs> Woo! You know what else? This is a big problem. That's what they said. Bugs and pests are a bigger issue when you have gaps around the window frames and the doors. Well, what did Jesus say? I give you authority to trample on top of, I'll just call it bugs and pests. Scorpions, right? How many want a scorpion coming and taking up a home in your home? No, you don't want that. I don't want that. No, you don't want that, do you? Oh, those stingers are so fun to play with, Pastor. That's what people do on those dating websites. Okay, number five. I'm about to move on, get real spiritual. I'm just showing, isn't this interesting that, that these companies will list these things and tell you, look for this in your house, and if you see any of these, call a professional. Right? But it's so funny because Christians live their lives and they have all these going on and they're like, well, I don't believe in organized religion. Pastors are so controlling. We're trying to fill all these cracks and get your foundation straight here. Hey, man, here's the number five sign. You ready for this? Uneven floors. Now, there may be various reasons for uneven floors, but they said if you have a lot of uneven floors, it's going to be noticeable. They have seen this particular company I'm quoting. They have seen... At different places in a home when it's uneven like this, a difference of even up to two to three inches, they say it looks very ugly. I imagine so. If you see, you know, two or three inch, it's all wobbly there. Well, this can be dangerous. This is quoting from the website. For children and elderly folks. Why? Because they fall more easily. Now this made me think of some scriptures we're going to look at tonight. If your foundation... And you're not building a strong one. If it's not strong on the Word, then you have uneven floors in your life. It's a lot easier to stumble and fall. If you don't know that God created you and you're God's building, then you might believe somebody else that looks at you and says, well, you're junk. Well, guess what? They didn't make you. They weren't there when your days were fashioned. But God was. And if God was there, take his word over their word. It doesn't say you're other people's building. You're God's building. Glory to God. That's worth you coming to hear. Now, let me just say this because of the next verse we're going to read. And this is how we closed Wednesday reading this passage right here. God is the creator, so he can choose how he wants things to operate. Correct? Yeah. 
And he's chosen the five-fold ministry to lay the foundation and build you. You could say it this way, equip you for the work of the ministry. And if you want a reference for that, Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 tells you that point blank. So if you don't have that doma, that's the Greek word for the fivefold. If you don't have that doma gift in your life, in particular a pastor, then the DNA of your future lays dormant. What are you here for? Are you here for your job? Well, on your job, you're supposed to be a minister, absolutely. But get this, what about God's call on your life? Some of you, God's called to do more than you're doing. See, see, it gets real real quiet because you don't want me to look you right in the eye, so I better look at the camera. That way you don't get nervous here in the service. But the truth is that God has called you, and if he's called you, then what are you doing letting days tick by because time is the most valuable thing you have without pursuing God's call on your life? Now, I know because I, I did that. I ignored. That's why I speak so freely. I ignored God's call on my life because I knew it cost me something. I couldn't be lukewarm. There was no way I was going to preach and teach the gospel and stand in a pulpit and preach to people and live a double lifestyle. That's real dangerous ground to toy with God like that. So I knew if I'm going to do what God called me to do, and it was his call, not mom and dad's call, it was God's call in my life, then I better make sure that I'm doing it his way and not my way. I just knew this. And if you're in here and and you know that God's called you to something that you're not walking in yet, maybe you need time of development. I get that. But get this. If you've been sitting on the sidelines, not pursuing that, what are you waiting for? Finally, I reached my turning point. Sunday, we had quite a few reach a turning point. They walked the aisle. They came. It wasn't the end. That was the beginning of a turning point to say, I'm going to follow God's plan from this day forward. Well, when I decided to do that, that means there's some things I had to give up, such as sipping, such as some friends, which that happened just automatically. I never sought out to exonate someone and go tell them, I can't be your friend no more. That's stupidity. I just pursue God and let the chips fall where they may. It don't take long for people to say, something's different about you. You mean you're actually pursuing God. See, there's a difference. And some of you, you're called by God, but you got friends that they're, number one, you don't even know if they're saved. Number two, they don't even ever think about the call of God or push you toward that. Now, if they're not going to push you toward that, then what are you doing? What are you doing? If they're not going to push you toward the call of God, what are you doing hanging out with them? Are you listening to me? Praise God. God's chosen the fivefold ministry to lay the foundation in your life, to equip you for the work of the ministry. So I like what Mike Marillo said, who was here a week and a half ago. He said, you know, when he reads Hebrews, he sees he's not a pastor. He's a lay minister, a business minister, basically. And he said, I read Hebrews and I see I have to have a pastor there because he's going to give an account for me. And I like it. He brought it up right here. He said, here's the question he had for you guys, and I'll reiterate it. If you got to have a pastor on that day, who is your pastor? Right? Find you one. And you better guard that relationship because here's what the enemy's going to do. He's going to make sure that there's seed sown where you start doubting that gift. Yep. You're going to start struggling with it. And here's, here's, can I just paint the picture for you so you know? Can I just paint it for you? Do you, are you how many want me to just paint the picture? You want me to? Some people don't want me to. How many want, how many want the picture painted? Right, here, here's what it looks like. You're serving. Things are good. Everything's wonderful. Something happens you disagree with. I'm done serving. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. Why? Well, because so-and-so does this. So-and-so said this. Stuff's going on. I don't think Pastor knows all this is happening. Guess who does know? God. Amen. Who called you, Pastor or God. Somebody say, you're being pompous and arrogant. I'm pointing to something here. See, if I depend on people, I'm not going to keep pastoring right here. Because you didn't call me. And if you didn't call me, then you can't get me off my post. And you say, I'm out of here. But I love you. I love you. You better find you a pastor. You better submit to him. You better submit to him. Well, I can't believe the arrogance. I can't believe. Go find your pastor and watch your mouth. Because when you find that, that pastor, he's going to sit with the same authority. And if he loves you enough, he's going to look you right now and tell you the same thing that I just told you. So you just got to make a decision, man. Are you called by God or not? 
If God called you and he called you his building, then who are you to pull the plug on what God called you to do? All right. Well, I didn't see that coming tonight. I want to be encouraged. That was, a, that was about as encouraging as you could get. Who called you? So who are you to step out on God? He's the one that stepped into your life. He's the one that came up with the church. He's the one that says, here's an opportunity to serve. I called you a minister of help. Yeah, you don't need me. You can fill my spot with anywhere. No, we need more ministers of help right now than ever before. Why? Because if you don't know, we're swelling. And when we swell, our net's getting bigger. I need more hands holding the net. I don't want a failure in the net. So those of you sitting here, I wonder if he's talking about me. I am. I am. See, people, they don't like it. Yeah, who do you think you are? I'm just called by God or I'm not. And I just made my decision already. 2006, I made my decision. If I ever step out on this, I'm going to do what he's called me to do. You know what he's called me to do? Make a disciple out of you. That's what he's called me to do. Not build a name for myself and have a following for myself and have a church just busting at the seams because of the count. And we have all these multiple services and wow, this is amazing. Now make that happen. Make it where we have to have that. Make it. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to multiple services till we have to do it, which means we can add about another, I don't know, 75 to 100 people in this room. You say, I don't believe it. Well, we can change the chairs. Easily we can get more than this in here. Easily. Somebody said, well, I don't like the way you're talking tonight. What have you been on? Well, I ate some hot sauce today, that's for sure. <laughs> but what I've been on is, is, is praying in the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And realize you're God's building. And let me tell you something. It's nothing for me to trifle with being a pastor. So I'm not going to play around. Here's my question. Why are you playing around in your role? Someday. You know how many people live on this planet? And they said, someday I'll get to God's call in my life. That never came. It never came. Don't let that be you. Now you say, I'm not. I don't agree. I ain't going to do it. I ain't gonna. Go ahead. I'll love you anyway as long as you're here. But some of you already got two feet out the door. Your head's still here just seeing, 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 seeing. Bye. Love you. Find you a pastor, man. Time is short. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is, in fact, this is so good that I just want to sit right here and just post up right here tonight. Because I don't always have the liberty from the Lord to speak this plainly to you, but you got to understand something. God's not dumb. He's called you. He's delivered you. He set you free. He's done what no man could do. You start serving. You get offended. You pull back. Who are you pulling back on? It ain't that big a deal. He's still on the throne. You can't get him off his throne. He's going to be on his throne, but he's not on the throne of your heart. See, I just take my time. I feel so awkward right now, and I'm just going to sit there. Because you need to hear that. Who else in your life is going to talk to you like that? You know what? Most Americans won't let anybody talk to them like that. They won't let anybody. Nobody can talk to them that way. You know why? They don't have a pastor. They don't have that Doma gift. I, this is why I'm camped out here. God chose the fivefold. The future in your life and God's call is hooked to that. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website, at AccelerateChristianSchool.cc or you can call our office 806-418-8913. If we build our lives on the foundation of our education, on the foundation of our personality, on the foundation of our natural ability, it won't amount to much in eternity. 
It won't amount to, to much in eternity. Listen, you only get one life. You can't reset it. You can't repeat it. Only what you do for Christ is going to mean anything. That's it. That's it. That's the simplicity of life. That's the foundation you've got to build on. What are you doing for him? What are you doing for him? See, Evan, when you show up to play guitar, you're not playing guitar so pastor's happy or so the worship leader's happy or so the congregation's like, man, he's got good rhythm up there. You're playing for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know you get that. That's why I say that. But every one of us in our role and what we're called to do, we're doing it for him. And if you're not doing it for him, then in eternity, there will be no reward. He says in verse 12, Look at this. He, he shifts gears. It gets pretty serious to the Corinth church. And if it's written to the Corinth church, it's written to us. He says, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, with silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. There's coming a day for all of us where our foundation will be exposed. What are we building on here? Because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Look at verse 14, 1 Corinthians 3. If anyone's work which he has built on endures. What's this a test on? Your foundation. And if the work which he has built on endures, he'll receive a reward. This tells me and you something we should pay attention. Our attention to our foundation has an effect on our eternal rewards. I said our attention to our foundation, does have an effect on our eternal rewards. That's why he said this. If anyone's work which he's built on endures, he will receive a reward. Verse 15, if anyone's work is burned. In other words, it just burned right up. He'll suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as though through fire. Now, people say, well, thank God, at least I'll still be in heaven. That will not be a day that you'll be excited about. You mean everything you've done for Christ was just burn up to nothing? That's quite possible this warning wouldn't be written to a church in the New Testament after the resurrection, after the Holy Spirit was poured out. Your work could be burned and you would suffer loss. So this is the old saying, you're saved by the skin of your teeth. You just barely made it. But everything you did was a waste. Folks, I, I'm not doing this for play. I'm not playing around with this. I'm not. I'm doing this because I want to make a disciple of Jesus out of you. Amen. Amen. In case you hadn't noticed, that's out of fashion in the church. People, oh, come on, it's all about you. And stroking you and making you feel good. Scratching really an itch in your ear. Oh, it's okay, it's okay, God's okay. Not if your whole life's going to be burned up to nothing. Why waste your time? Why have the warning ahead of time and say, it's okay, God doesn't care. Listen to me. If a godly foundation is laid correctly, a person's life will be well supported and he or she will be able to pass the test of fire and time. On the other hand, if a foundation under a person's life is built too hastily or on shifting soil, that person will not have a firm footing as they proceed forward in their spiritual walk. It's better you hear this now than years from now. I think about this all the time because, see, if you were in my shoes, you, you would recognize something. It's a lot harder. It would be a lot harder for me right now to change a few things right now with the church this size as when I first received the pastorate here. And it was much smaller and I made some decisions back then. We're not going to be a seeker-friendly church. That's right. See, this is the thing. See, you don't get the knowledge that I get. And that's, that's the sad thing. But my pastor, Dr. Barkley, he'll get calls from all over the nation of pastors that have churches four, five, six, ten times, fifteen times, some of them hundreds of times bigger than this church. And they say, my church is out of control. I need help. I need help. They don't know what to do. Because once you start down this stream of building something in your life, it's a lot easier to get it right at the foundation level than 15 stories up from now. And have to tear all this back down and go back down. I think of this all the time. Maybe you don't. This is just the way I think because I think about these scriptures. If a foundation under a person's life is built too hastily or on shifting soil, that person will not have a firm footing as they proceed forward in their spiritual walk. Slippery steps 
Are steps taken without a solid foundation underneath? Slippery steps are steps taken without a solid foundation underneath. Psalms 17, verse 4. Psalms 17, verse 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I've kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Look at that. By how? The word of your lips. What does that tell me? And you. If you want a solid path to walk on, you better have a steady intake and diet of the Word of God. I'm not telling you something you've never heard. Every Christian should know this. You've got to get in the Word. You've got to pray every day. Yes. See, you know what happens? The enemy attacks those things in your life. What do I mean attacks them? Well, if you do this on a consistent basis and you do it long enough and you'll be honest... You'll tell the truth in this church that you know what? When I do this a lot and open up my word, all of a sudden, ding. Got an email. Uh-oh. Better check that. That's, that's, that. That needs my response quick. Let me check it. You get to doing that, and, and before you realize it, you get a call. Oh, hey, Aunt Myrtle, how you doing? I haven't talked to you in a year. What's going on? 32 minutes pass by. You're like, oh, I got to get ready for work. You go, get ready. Off you go. What happened? God's the one that suffered. See, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. That happens one day of your life. You're going to be all right if you get in the Word and get a diet of it that day. But let me tell you, every day outside the Word of God is a day where you're taking a step without a solid foundation under you. Why? By the word of your lips, I've kept away from the paths of the destroyer. How many would love to be destroyed tomorrow? No, no takers? How about destroyed a year from now? No takers? I don't want you destroyed either. God doesn't want you destroyed. But you better get the word of his lips in your mouth. And you better speak it and get it in your heart. Get it in your eyes. Listen to it. Do what you got to do to get the word of God in you. Amen? Amen. 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 Look at verse 5. Here's what I want you to see. Uphold my steps in your paths. Get this. The only Time God is giving you strength to keep your footing is when you're on His path. Woo! Wow. How do I get there? Steady intake of the Word of God. God's never going to lead you outside of His Word to go and do something contrary to the Word. God's leading me to do at home church. Really? Yes. I sit at home and watch. That's not a path where your steps are upheld by God. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to the Accelerate Church TV program. We're so glad that you could join us today. While this does conclude today's message, it does not conclude the message in its entirety. To hear this series, you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc and click on the sermons tab. Or if you're in the area, we would love to meet you in person and we're located at 4400 South Crockett. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church TV program.